much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless the Quiz, where the aim of the game is to find the most obscure answer possible. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Carl and this is my fiance Lauren and we're from Newcastle. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Ian. This is my daughter Pippa and we're from Iceland in Cambridgeshire. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Alison. This is my sister Catherine. I'm from St Neots in Cambridgeshire and Catherine is from Broadstairs in Kent. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Shafak. This is my husband Arketh and we're from Rotherham. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Very warm welcome to the show. Lovely to have you with us. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. A sly old fox rooting around the sly old bins. It's my pointless <laughs> friend. It's Richard. Hiya. <laughs> Hey everybody. Hello there. Hi there. Are you well? Hey, I'm very well, thank you. How are no, you? Good. Yeah, not so bad. I can't complain, really. Uh, look on podium one there, Carl and Lauren, very familiar faces, because the uh, last two shows have been through to the head-to-head -head yep. both times, but it's our last show today. Yeah. So, fingers crossed, last chance. And podium three, welcome back, Catherine and Alison as well. Knocked out in round two last time, and welcome to our two new pairs. Uh, yeah, Steve and Tina won the jackpot, so that means today's jackpot starts off back at £1,000. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> now, remember, it's the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated, so just keep your scores as low as you can. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category for round one this afternoon is... Vocabulary. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go yes. second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words of four or more letters in language as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any word of four or more letters uh, in the English language which you can make just using those letters, please. So just using an L, a couple of A's, an N, a couple of G's, a U or an E. So uh, any four letter or more, just using those letters there, please. Uh, and we use the, uh, the Chambers uh, Dictionary app. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, Carl, welcome back to Pointless. Uh, remind us all about yourself for the third and final time, Carl. This is your last chance to tell us things perhaps you haven't told us before. I'm Carl, I'm a problem manager. He manages problems, I mean... <laughs> Outside that, very into sports, various sports as well, from karate to geeky sports, where I'd say, like, table tennis. OK. So, uh, table tennis used to play on national level, got to... Oh, really? Play with a lot of the old guys, like Desmond Douglas and... Wow, how far back from the table do you stand? I mean, back from the distance I am from you, that um, kind of... Is it that... Were you that good? You can be a good 15, 20 feet back at times. Yeah. So it is interesting. Wow. Um, OK, now, Carl. What are you going to go for? What have you made out of, out of language? Mm, not a lot, if I'm absolutely honest. Um, I'm going to go for angle. OK, angle. Why not? Let's see how many of our 100 people went for angle. It's right. Goes down to 30. Not bad. Gets us off to a solid start. And perfect for a table tennis player as well. It's all about angles, table tennis. Oh, isn't it? Oh, it's all Is about it angles. Yeah. yeah. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. And now, Pippa, welcome. Great to have you here. Tell us all about yes. yourself. Um, I'm kind of a film buff, so um, I actually got to star in a film a couple of... I say star, I was an extra. It's not really star in a film, but... Uh, <laughs> it's it's good, isn't it? You were on screen. <laughs> yes. What yes. was the film? It was Dumbo, the Tim Burton remake. Well, we which scenes up. were you in? Um, I was in all of the circus scenes, the so kind of all of the scenes with Danny DeVito in pretty much. I was in the, like, crowd and stuff. They're very long hours. Yes. But, you, you know, <laughs> they're not especially arduous. And if you're yes. good at crosswords, the hours just fly by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. Oh, so, Pippa, what are you going to go for? Um, I'm going to slightly steal. I'm not going to lie from... <laughs> I'm going for Angel, which is just... <laughs> Listen, why <laughs> not? Steal. If Angle works, why shouldn't Angel? <laughs> Let's see where it ends up on our, on our tower. That goes down to 23. There you are. Angel's on your side. 23 for Angel. It's going to be a whole round of anagrams of the word angle now, isn't it? It's what you've set in store. A messenger from the gods. An angel. Yes. You know that. I know that as well as anybody. Are you looking for words? Yeah, oh, I, okay. I, I, I might, don't get very much time. So... I might predict one for okay, you. OK, go on. Oh, no, don't. You might flatter me, because I, I, you know... 
Um, yeah, OK. I'll, okay. Do, I'll look for one. I'll see you yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Catherine, welcome back. Thank um, you. Remind us all about yourself. So, um, I live in Broadstairs. I'm, I'm actually on a career break at the moment, trying to decide what to do. Oh, well, maybe um, we can help you. I'd, I'd be grateful for any suggestions. What did you do before? So, um, I was a, a risk manager and um, a, a management consultant, an IT right. trainer. OK. Um, I've travelled to about 39 countries with work. I think trapeze artist. I was going to say dancer, but yes. I can't believe you said okay. that. I said to Alison, shall I lie and tell them I used to be a trapeze artist? I can't believe you said that. Hold on, I mean, <laughs> you've got it. Now you have to do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing. You're not allergic to chalk? Not that I know of. Get well. I, I, if I, you're from I, Kent, you can't be allergic to chalk. No, sure. that's true. <laughs> that is very true. That would be awful, wouldn't <laughs> it? That would be terrible. Very good indeed. Now, Catherine, what are you, what are you going to go for? Um, well, if I'm going to be a trapeze artist, I will need to lunge. Nice. Lunge. OK, let's see where we end up with lunge. Lunge is right. Well, 30s are high and you pass it, 23s Ooh. are low, and you pass it. Wow. Eight for lunge. Very well done indeed. <laughs> Yeah, a sudden plunge forwards, or, or what posh people call dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. OK. Um, Shafak, welcome to Point. It's lovely to have you here. Uh, Thank tell you. us all about yourself. I'm Shafak. I currently a stay at home mum uh, with my two sons. Tell us the name of your two sons Tayeb and Harun. Tayeb, hey, Tayeb. Harun. Harun. Hello. You're going to blow his mind because for a two-year-old, he's strangely fascinated by this show. Oh, really? Yesterday, I wasn't in the room and instead of watching Pepper, he'd asked his grandparents to put this on and I just walked in and he was watching it. That's, but was he shouting things like, Vanuatu! <laughs> <laughs> he, he just calls it, thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, he's going to learn maths. I love that. <laughs> I think he might be more freaked out by the fact that you're on the show. That might be more... <laughs> that's going to be... Yeah. That's yeah. going to be amazing. Um, OK, so, uh, what are you going to go for? I'm going to go for... Um, luge. 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 I like this. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Luge is right. 30 is the high score. 8 is the low. Down to 4. Look at that. Down to four. Very well played, getting some lovely answers now. Yeah, luge is type of toboggan that you sort of you're, you're on your back on. The way they make a luge is they take a lunge and they they take the N out of the middle. <laughs> Amazing. That's how it's made. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. Four was the best score of the past. Very well done indeed, Shafak. Uh, then up to eight, where we find Catherine Allison. Uh, then we up to 23, Pippa and Ian. Then 30s, where we find Carl and Lauren. You're not way ahead, but Lauren, you've got time. Use that time, like I'm going to. See if I can find a, a, a word. <laughs> Very best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Now then, Akif, welcome to Point. It's great to have you here. Thanks. Look how well you've been set up by Shafak. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's a doublet. <laughs> <laughs> you know this, how this works. Uh, if we were on four, even at this early stage, 25 would get you into the next round. Yeah, I feel like you come up here and you just lose all sense of vocabulary and spelling. So I'm going to go for gauge, G-A-U-G-E. G-A-U-G-E. Let us see if that is right. There is your red line. Let's see what happens when we say gauge. It's right. 61. 61 taking your total up to 65. Yeah, to measure something accurately to gauge, as in uh, 61 points for gauge. Mm. I think it's sort of staring you in the face there, I think is why it scores so many. It's a perfectly good word, but... Perfectly good. Yeah. Yeah, very well gauged, yeah. in fact. Yeah, there we are. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Alison, welcome back. Hello. Remind us all about yourself, Alison. I live in St Neots. Um, I care for my mum. Um, I used to be a chef. Of my, well, I'm a qualified chef, and I've gone back to doing birthday cakes. I did my own wedding cake when I got married, and I do my grandson's birthday cakes when I have the opportunity. Are they... Listen, this is your time to blow your own trumpet, because you are about to start again making cakes. Well, are they spectacular? Well, I did do a Thomas the Tank Engine with a tunnel and a working train. Whoa! A working train, <laughs> all made of sugar? Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that, Thank Alison. you. My mouth is watering. 
Um, you are on eight, which means 56 yes. or less gets you through. I've got a risky one, but I'm not going to do it. But I will okay. go for Lung, L-U-N-G. Lung. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. There is your red line. Very well done. You are through 25, but that takes your total up to 33. Very nice. Uh, yeah, cleverly just taking your sister's answer and yeah. taking one letter off. Why not, right? That's what sisters yeah. are for. Well, yes. Very We're well very done. Close. Safely here, no kidding. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Now, Ian, how great to have you here. Welcome. Thank Tell you. us all about yourself. Uh, I'm a software engineer. I live with my wonderful wife, Rachel, and equally wonderful dogs in Iceland. I used to be, a long time ago, a guitar teacher, and I played in uh, quite a few bands, and that kept me interested for some time. Very nice. Uh, so, Ian, you're on 23, 41 or less, gets you through. As Richard said, might be a series of anagrams. I'm going to go for glean, G-L-E-A-N. Glean. And let's see how many of our 100 people said glean. There is your red line, Ian. This is right. And you're through. It's a very good answer. Down it goes to seven. Fantastic, Ian. Takes your total up to 30. Uh, well played, Ian. Nicely done. Now, Lauren, welcome back. Great to have you with us one final time. Remind us all about yourself, Lauren. Uh, so I'm Lauren uh, from Newcastle. I'm here with my fiancé. We recently got engaged um, and we're getting married next year in Northumberland. Congratulations. Where am I in Northumberland? Where are you going to Newton get? by the Sea. Oh, lovely. High Newton, Low Newton? Mm, not Which quite one sure. Are you go? <laughs> down, by, down by the Somewhere ship in? in the middle. Or, a little bit uh, further up. up. The joiners. Oh, it's a beautiful part of the world. Um, Lauren, what are you going to go for? I'm going to go for glue. Glue, says Lauren. Let's see how many of our 100 people said glue. There's your red line. Glue gets you through. And it goes down to eight. Very well done indeed. 38 is your total. Fantastic. Very nicely done. Yeah, glue. You know, it means glue. Yeah. Or yeah. to glue. Yeah. Or a glue or some glue. Yeah. Um, have you got an answer? Yeah. Gunge is what I'm going Gunge. Gunge. That's interesting. I wonder if it's there, Gunge. It is there. Five points. Nice. Very well done. That. Good. I thought you'd say uh, ague is what I thought you'd oh, say. Oh, ague. You know, like a fever. Like ague cheek. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that would have scored one. Oh, I should have gone for Once ague. again, I overestimated oh. you. Yeah, you did. Uh, you oh, that's did. annoying. I, I really felt in my bones that you yeah. might uh, do that. Talking of bones, there's a bone on the pointless answers list. We'll go through lots of the pointless answers now, shall we? Uh, Gaga is a pointless answer, as in to go Gaga. Uh, Galena, which is lead sulfide. Uh, Geal, which is another way to say to congeal. Uh, guana, which is uh, like an iguana. Uh, Lagan, uh, which is wreckage at the bottom of the sea. Loom, anything in the shape of a half moon. There's loads and loads of pointless answers, 70 answers overall. And uh, Naga, which is a, a snake ulna, which is the bone in the arm, is a pointless answer. And ulna with an E on the end, which is the plural, is also a pointless answer. Ungag, mm -hmm. which is uh, what we do a lot of the time, don't we, with uh, <laughs> our jokes. Uh, there's loads and loads of pointless answers. Uh, uh, Agen, Aguna, Alang, Alga. Very well done if you said any of those at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that brings us to the end of our first round. Oh, Akif and Shafak, I'm so sorry. I mean, what a welcome that was. <laughs> you just got here and we boot you off. But we do it with good grace because we know you'll be back next time. In fact, not just once, but twice. Unless, of course, you go through to the final next time. But we'll look forward to that very much. Uh, Akif and Shafak, thank you so much. Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. Very well done. We passed our language round with flying colours. Fantastic. Uh, Ian, you're our lowest individual scorer of the remaining pairs. Shafat actually gave us a four-pointer. So, yeah, she's a force to be reckoned with when she comes back, I suspect. Um, and Ian and Pippa, very well done. You're our lowest combined scores, so that's great. Uh, best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Pop music. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, and the question concerns... UK number one albums of the 1990s, Richard. Uh, we're going to show you now the names of six number one albums from the 90s. Can you tell us who had uh, number ones with these, please? There'll be six on the first board, six on the second, 12 and all. To have a go at home. Thanks very much indeed. Let's reveal our first board of six albums, and here they come. 
All of these were number ones. Jagged Little Pill, Black Tie, White Noise, What's the Story, Morning Glory, I Do Not Want What I Haven't Got, OK Computer, Walthamstow. There we are. Lauren, what are you thinking? Um, the tricky one's trying to work out what will be lower, and I'm really not sure. I'm going to go with Jagged Little Pill and say Alanis Morissette. Alanis Morissette says Lauren for Jagged Little Pill. How many people said that? It's completely right. It's a good answer. Down against the 24. Very well done indeed. 24 for Alanis Morissette. Yeah, from 1995, that was just a huge... It must have been one of the biggest albums of the 90s. Huge, all over the world. It had ironic in it. Uh, mm. You ought to know, hand in my pocket. Mm. I mean, it was just... She was massive, wasn't she? Mm. Yeah. But it was an excellent record. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Pippa. Pippa, what are you going to go for? Um, I know a couple of the others. I'm just going to have to go for the one that I hope is the lowest out of the two. So I'm going to go OK Computer, Radiohead. Radiohead for OK Computer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Radiohead. Radiohead is right. Well, 24 is the only score we've got. Radiohead is 22. <laughs> Very well done, Pepper. Uh, yeah, from 1997, part of it recorded in Jane Seymour's house um, down near Bath. Can I just say, well done, Pippa, but also, can we also say well done to Ian? Because quite often you get people... Pippa is quite young, I think, perhaps you weren't even born in the 90s. No, uh, 2000. And usually you get an awful lot of people just go, oh, how would I know this is from the 90s, whereas... We know the Beatles and Elvis. So, well done, and well done, Ian, for bringing your daughter up properly. And uh, <laughs> there we are. I appreciate his music from uh, before they were born. <laughs> there we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Alison. Oh. Alison. Oh, no. Or oh, is that a sort of suppressed yelp of joy? My music ended in 1985. Yes. I'm just too old for this. <laughs> oh, Alison. Oh, oh, the no. only one I know is What's the Story, Morning Glory, and that's Oasis. We're going to go for Oasis. What's yeah. the story? Morning Glory. Let's see. Let's put that to the 100. It's right. Well, 24 is our high score. 22 is our low. 46, our high score. Let's start with Walton, so shall we? It's either going to be... It'll be who you think it is, I suspect. East 17. East 17. Is, yeah. Absolutely right. Famously from uh, Walton. So 18 points for East 17. Black tie, white noise. Is it's a lesser-known album by one of the most famous uh, British... David Bowie. David Bowie, yeah. David Absolutely. Bowie. Ten points for that. And I do not want what I haven't got. Oh, I, I didn't get this. I, I reckon I remembered the name. It's Sinead O'Connor. There we are. Yeah, four points for that. Very well done if you said that at home. Best answer on the board. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, we're halfway through the round. Let's look at those scores. Pippa, well done. <laughs> uh, 22. Pippa and Ian looking very strong. 24 is where we find Lauren and Carl, then up to 46 for Catherine and Alison. Well, Catherine, I hope you have better luck with the next board, uh, just to even the scores up a little bit. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> Let's put six more number one albums up on the board, and here they are. Who had hits with these? Everything Changes, The Division Bell, Park Life, Older, Ray of Light, Innuendo. Catherine. I don't guess, because Alison will kill me. <laughs> I'm going to go Park Life Blur. Park Life Blur. Well, we've had Oasis. Let's have Blur. Um, there's no red line views, you're the high scorers, but let's see how far down the column we get with Blur. It's right. That goes down to 42. Sorry. 42. That's going to rankle in some quarters. That takes your total up to 88. Yeah, our own little, our own little blur of Oasis. Yeah. yeah. Oasis win 46-42. It's still pretty close after still all these years, close. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now then, Ian. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> <laughs> right, I know a few of them. Uh, I'm going to go for the division bell and say Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, says Ian. Now then, here is your red line. If you can get below this red line with Pink Floyd, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. It's right. And you're through. Look at that. Down against 15. Very well done indeed. Taking your total up to 37. 
Uh, Ian had the look of a man who was going to say Pink Floyd there right from the start of the round. <laughs> it was, uh, it's, uh, it features Ely Cathedral on the cover as well, which is uh, not a million miles from uh, you guys. Also, a song on there called High Hopes, which has been covered by one of the great artists of his generation. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. You did a cover of it, I right? I did, yeah. Yeah. How does that go? Um, it's got a, it's the one with the church bell ringing. It's very, it's very beautiful. Oh, lovely. High yeah, Hopes. It's a lovely song. I know the song High Hopes by Panic at the Disco. Yes. Yeah. But not, it's not that. It's not the no. same version. I'd like to hear your version of that as well, by the way. <laughs> really good. We'll do that. Oh, beautiful. For goodness sake. We get Ian to do the guitar as well. It'd be Excellent. lovely. Carl, this board is all yours. 63 points. That's your, that's your margin. I know a few of them. So I guess it, everything changes as take that. Um, older, I'm not sure about. Innuendo will be Queen of Freddie Mercury. So I'm going to go for Ray of Light and Madonna. Ray of Light, Madonna, says Carl. And you're getting firm nods from Lauren, which has got to be good. There is your red line. Can you get below that with Madonna? Ray of Light is right. You're through. Very well done, Madonna. Absolutely on the money. 35, taking your total up to 59. Safe and sound. Round to your uh, third head-to-head -head in a row, which is very, very impressive stuff. Um, you were right about the other two as well. They both scored the same, actually. Innuendo was queen, would have scored you 20. And everything changes to 20 as well, but take that. Best answer on the board is older. Is that George Michael? It is George Michael, yeah. yeah. Well played. And that would have scored nine. Well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. So at the end of our second round, we have to say goodbye to another pair. And Catherine and Alison, <laughs> I'm afraid, it was round two last time I as know. well. I know. We've got to break this. We've got to break this for the next show. The glass ceiling of round two <laughs> gets you right through to the final. Anyway, it's been lovely having you on. We'll see you again next time, Catherine and Alison. But for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for the head to head. <laughs> Congratulations, Ian and Pippa, Carl and Lauren. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,000. But before we play the head to head, Let's just see if we can't chuck something else into that jackpot by finding some pointless answers. So this is how it's going to work. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many British butterflies oh, as they could. <laughs> Rich. Yep. Six butterflies up there. Two will be ones that people had heard of. Two will be ones that no one had heard of. And two are ones that we made up as well. See if you can find the ones that no one has heard of. £250 in the jackpot for each one you do. See if you can get both of those at home. Thanks very much indeed. OK, let's reveal the six butterflies, two of which are pointless. Can we find them out? We've got the Collie Wobble, Duke of Burgundy, Painted Lady, Rear Admiral, Speckled Wood, Wall. There you are, six butterflies. Feel free to chat out loud, cos it's useful to pool your knowledge at this point. P Painted Lady is one that's going to score points. Right. Rear Admiral might be a red herring for Red Admiral. Yeah, that's, that's what right. we've just we had think. that discussion. Um, yeah. Do you know any we others? can rule out? I, I <laughs> don't know about any of the others. I don't know if... Is Duke of Berg... No, I was going to say, is that um, a spoof because of Monarch Butterfly in a Ooh. different... Ooh. Wall just seems so random, I would think that that is a pointless outcome, <laughs> but... I can't, sorry, Speckled Wood or Collie Wobble? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, one of those two. I have no idea. I'm going to go for Wall. I mean, why wouldn't you? I completely <laughs> buy. Even if it's wrong, I think you're right. Let's see. <laughs> uh, is wall a pointless butterfly? It's a butterfly. Oh. It's a, it just feels like it, doesn't it? It has that sort of ring to it. It's a pointless answer. Very, very well done indeed. Absolutely impeccable reasoning. <laughs> and uh, just beautifully done. There we are. Carl and Lauren, what are you thinking and what are you going to go for? Um, we are going to go with speckled wood. Speckled wood. It was between that and collie wobble, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Speckled wood. Good luck. Let's see. Is speckled wood a pointless butterfly? It is a butterfly. It is a butterfly. We haven't had a double pointless in this round for a long time. Oh, <laughs> no, we didn't get it there. It just perched on the one. Richard. Yeah, it was lovely working together there as well. Very nicely done. Um, added £250. Let's take a look, shall we? Now, Collie Wobble is another name for butterflies in your stomach. Yes. And the Collie Wobble, so that is uh, an incorrect answer. Uh, Painted Lady, as you suspected, um, scored some points. 
scored you three points. So Rear Admiral Duke of Burgundy, I think you thought both of those might be uh, red herrings, which of course is another butterfly. Um, which <laughs> of those is incorrect and which of those would have added uh, 250 Shall pounds? we say the Duke of Burgundy maybe is a butterfly then, yeah. shall we? Yeah, yeah, you're right to say it. Absolutely, Duke of Burgundy is the other pointless answer. Rear Admiral was an uh, incorrect answer. So Wall and Duke of Burgundy. Wall butterflies yeah. are called wall butterflies because they live like on walls. They love a wall. They love Imagine a wall. The, the person who thought that name up. Oh. <laughs> you could call it anything. Go, uh, like Duke of Burgundy is a good name for a butterfly, it's right? It's a good name. I hope the person who came up with the word wall butterfly is not watching at home. No. Oh, I do enjoy it. And Oh, good, they're doing butterflies. Oh, they're doing butterflies. This is a... <gasps> they put wall... Darling, darling, they put wall butterfly up on. Uh, uh, this is... <laughs> I wonder if they're going to mention my name. And now look. Yeah, that. No, now it, it's, look, it's a really good name for a butterfly. And and right now, the wife said, well, at least, at least they kept you anonymous, darling. At least they didn't <laughs> mention your name. He goes, no, I know, I know. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Very well done. You managed to find one pointless answer, which means you have added £250 to the jackpot, and it now stands at £1,250. But who'll be playing for it? Let's find out in the head-to-head. -head. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot, and you're now allowed to confer. Very, very best of luck. Here comes the first question, and it's all about famous people playing chess. Richard. Yep, I'm going to show you five pictures of famous people playing chess now, but who are these people? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five famous people playing chess. And we have got... A... B... C. D. And E. OK. Ian and Pippa, you're our low scorers. You're our golden couple, so you get to go first. Um, I Uh, we're going to go for C and say Lennox Lewis. C, Lennox Lewis, say Ian and Pippa. Now then, Carl and Lauren, over to you. Talk us through that board. We don't know A or D. B is Prime Minister. And E is Ozzy Osbourne. So I think we'll have to go E, Ozzy Osbourne. And we knew C as well, yeah. <laughs> OK, you're going to say E, Ozzy Osbourne. So, Lennox Lewis, Ozzy Osbourne. Ian and Pippa have gone for Lennox Lewis for C. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Lennox Lewis is right. That goes down to 19. <laughs> Carl and Lauren, meanwhile, have gone for Ozzy Osbourne for E. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. 83. Very well done indeed, Ian and Pepper. After one question, you are up 1-0. Yeah, one of those rounds where there's two big scorers, two low scorers, and uh, <laughs> getting in with the middle <laughs> answer is, uh, is very useful. Well done, Lennox Lewis, a uh, very passionate chess player. A is Lauren Bacall. She's playing chess against Humphrey Bogart there. And she would have scored you seven points. Uh, what do you reckon Boris Johnson scored? I mean, probably sort of 62 or something. 90. OK, 90. Yeah, so it could oh, be worse. 90 points for uh, Boris Johnson. Um, Ozzy Osbourne, we already know. Now, this, uh, very well done if you got this, the Labour MP, Rachel Reeves, who was a um, under-14 national chess champion. And she? she's a pointless answer. Amazing. That's her promoting chess in schools, which you would, I think, if you were an under-14 national chess champion. A, that has the look of a, of a, of a posed chance, doesn't it? That she wasn't caught by chance at chess. No, no, she, she plays standing up and uh, she yeah. doesn't like being photographed and uh, she was about to take a move and about someone to take took a, a photograph. Stop. Yeah, yeah, she literally okay. just flipped the board over yeah, after that. Yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet. <laughs> she didn't. I'm sure she's very calm. On the Ozzy Osbourne photograph, I've never seen chess pieces look more like paraphernalia. Yes, I wonder if he's not really playing a game of chess there. <laughs> I think it's possible he's posing behind a chessboard. Hiding. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, now, here comes your second question. Carl and Lauren, you get to answer it first, but you've got to win this one. This is your last shot at the pointless final, remember. OK, best of luck. Our second question is all about... 
BBC Culture's 100 Greatest Films Directed by Women. Richard. Yep, I'm going to show you five titles from that list, but we've missed the last word out of each title. Can you tell us what that final word is, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five titles. Here they come. The Hurt Blank, Catherine Bigelow, 2008. The Blank, Jane Campion, 1993. Sleepless in Blank, Nora Ephron, 1993. Monsoon Blank, Mira Nair, 2001. And Fast Times at Ridgemont Blank, Amy Heckling, 1982. I'm going to read those all again. The Hurt Blank, 2008. The Blank, 1993. Sleepless in Blank, 1993. Monsoon Blank, 2001. And Fast Times at Ridgemont Blank, 1982. There we are. So, Carl and Lauren, it's over to you. We're going to go for The Hurt Locker. OK, The Hurt Locker for the Catherine Bigelow. Uh, now, Ian and Pippa, do you want to talk us through that board? Can you talk us through any of them, apart from the third one? I can only name the third one. So. I think we're going to have to go for that. Sleepless yeah. in Seattle. Sleepless in Seattle. OK, so we have The Hurt Locker, Sleepless in Seattle. Carl and Lauren said The Hurt Locker. How many of our 100 said that? It's right. Down it goes to 50. <laughs> Ian and Pippa have gone for Sleepless in Seattle. Might we be about to break our, what is it, 11 show run? Yeah. 11 show run of having two nils in our head to head. Let's find out. Sleepless in Seattle. How many people said it? It's right. <laughs> 89. <laughs> Which means, very well done indeed, Carl and Lauren, back in the game. After two questions, it's one all. Very well played. It's amazing. Nora Ephron never won an Oscar, which I find it absolutely extraordinary. She's such a genius. Yeah. Given she wrote that and she wrote When Harry Met yeah. Sally. Exactly. They don't like comedies, do they? They yeah, don't the Oscars. like comedies, amazing. even if they're brilliant. Yeah. Now, let's fit in the rest of these. Uh, the piano. piano, Jane Campion. Oscar nominated but lost to Schindler's List. Um, that was scored just seven points. Fast Times at Ridgemont. High. Yeah, absolutely. Would have scored you 23. And you know this one, Monsoon yeah. Wedding. Monsoon oh, yes, I'd remember that. Yeah. And that would have scored you two points. Best answer up there. Thank you very much indeed. OK, here comes your third question. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. So very, very best of luck. Our third question is all about books by famous scientists, Richard. Five titles now of books written by scientists. We'll show you the initials of those scientists as well, but who are they, please? Whoever comes up with the most obscure answer is going through to play for the jackpot. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five books. Here they come. Who are the scientists behind these? Relativity, The Special and General Theory, A-E. Gorillas in the Mist, D-F. The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, O-S. Silent Spring, R-C. And Principia Mathematica, I-N. There we are. Ian and Pippa will go first. Uh, we're going to go for the last one and say Isaac Newton. You're going to say, I pronounce it Principia, that's church Latin, Principia Mathematica. I mean, m proper uh, Latin scholars will be, will be cursing that. Principia Mathematica is how they'd prefer that to be. So you're going to say Isaac Newton for that. Now, Carl and Lauren, what are you going to go for? Do you want to talk us through the board? Another really obvious one at the top, and Isaac Newton at the bottom, so I think they might have beaten us to the most <laughs> answer on the, out of those two. Yeah, Fred, we're going to have to go for Albert Einstein for the top answer. Albert Einstein. So we have Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein. So Ian and Pippa went for Isaac Newton for Principia Mathematica. Let's see if that's right. How many of our 100 said it? It's right. That goes down to 20. Uh, meanwhile, we've got Carl and Lauren on Albert Einstein for relativity, etc. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Albert Einstein. This is right. And there we are, 43, and I'm afraid judgment has been delivered. And after three questions, Ian and Pippa, you are through to the final 2-1.
Very well played. Do you know the weird thing about that board is Isaac Newton was originally at the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, now, let's fill in the rest of these, shall we? Uh, Gorillas in the Mist. I can't oh, you know I this know I one. know this. Diane Fossey. Yes. Diane Fossey would have scored you 11 points. Silent Spring is Rachel Carson would have scored you two. Now, this last one, which I thought was incredibly famous, but it's a pointless answer. You know this book. It's a great book. Oliver Sacks. I do know. Yeah. yeah I see. Pointless answer, no, amazingly. Very well done if you said that at home. Thank you very much indeed. Well, we are at the end of our head to head round and we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs, Carl and Lauren. I'm afraid this is the end of the road. It's been lovely. It's been, I feel like you've been here for such a long time. I, I don't know where we're going to be without you when we have our next show. But uh, thank you so much for playing Carl and Lauren. But for Ian and Pippa, it's now time for the pointless fight. Congratulations, Ian and Pippa. You have seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,250. Well, what about that? You've been our low scorers every single round. Uh, you managed to truffle out the uh, pointless butterfly, the, uh, the famous wall butterfly. <laughs> um, and here you are. We just need one more pointless answer from you and you will take that £1,250 jackpot away. Um, anything you'd like to see come up? Um, Game of Thrones, yes. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Harry Potter, basically any fantasy would be okay. great. <laughs> OK, Pippa's good on those. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave it all to her if she forget <laughs> one of those. W words is good for me. Um, and music's pretty good for both of us. OK, well, you get to choose your category from the four we put up. Let's see what's here. Well, we've got authors born in the 19th century, US presidential elections, double centuries in test cricket, rare breeds of poultry. There we go. Perfect. That's just a dream. <laughs> just what we said. <laughs> I think we can rule out the last one. Yes. Um, um, I would say rule out cricket. Yeah, and rule out cricket, yes. I mean, you're probably going to be trying to name losing candidates, maybe. And I only know I think, I modern think, elections. I think so our best be hope any... is the authors, but even then it's going to be... Touch and go. Yeah. <laughs> Do you go for that? Can do. OK, we'll go for Authors Born in the 19th Century. Authors Born in the 19th Century, it is, Richard. That rare breeds of poultry is going to be sticking around for a long time, isn't it? But then, <laughs> at some point, it's going to be someone's absolutely perfect category, isn't it? We'll get a poultry <laughs> farmer along. Uh, very best of luck. Uh, three authors here. Um, I hope one of these um, suits you. We're looking for any novel or novella published by Henry James, by Anthony Trollope, or by Robert Louis Stevenson, please. So any novel or novella published by one of those three, please, according to the Oxford Dictionary of Writers and their works. Thanks very much indeed. OK, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of your answers to be pointless. Are you ready? As will ever be. OK, <laughs> let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Right, okay. I know nothing by Henry James or Anthony Trollope, so it's going to be all down to Robert Louis Stevenson for me. OK, um, well, I don't know any of them. My okay. English teachers will be crying. Um... <laughs> yeah, OK, well, Robert Louis Stevenson, we've got Treasure Island, but that's too obvious. Yeah. We've got Kidnapped, which is slightly less obvious. Um, he didn't write Jekyll and Hyde, did he? Um... Or was that somebody else? This is embarrassing. I studied that at A level, oh, and well, I uh, cannot tell you the author. So uh, that's that's worrying. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> uh, I should know some more books by him, but uh, I just can't pick up any off the top of my head. Mm. We've got three answers there. We're going to do yeah. any better? Um, well, I can't name any, so I'm going to have to just go off what you know. Ten seconds left. I think we can stop there. You're not <laughs> going to get any better answers than that. OK, you have got your three answers. Let's hear them. What are you going to give me? Treasure Island. Treasure Island. I'm going to say Kidnapped. Kidnapped. And The Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. And The Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Kidnapped. OK, Kidnapped goes last. Least likely to be pointless? Uh, Treasure, Treasure Island. Treasure Island and Jekyll and Hyde will pop in the middle. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We've got Treasure Island, Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde, and Kidnapped. Three answers up there. One of those could turn out to be pointless and win you that jackpot, £1,250. I mean, that's a nice sum to be taking back home. What would you like to do with it? Ian, I'm going to ask you first. I've always wanted to go to New Zealand, so uh, the money would go towards that. Um, a nice holiday. 
Very good. Pippa, how about you? Um, I've always wanted to take a year out and do a road trip around America, so one week in, one week in each state. Um, so it would kind of be going towards that. Very good indeed. Well, best of luck. Three answers. Let's hope one of them is pointless and wins you that jackpot. £1,250 riding on this. In all three cases, we are looking for Robert Louis Stevenson novels and novellas. Treasure Island was your least confident answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Treasure Island. Well, who knows? Treasure Island could go all the way down to zero, but it doesn't. 71. <laughs> Unsurprising. <laughs> 71. Uh, let's not dwell on that. Yeah. Strange case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. We're back on, still on, uh, Robert Louis Stevenson novels and novellas. If this is pointless, £1,250 is yours, Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. It's Again, it's right. Well, yeah. you pass Treasure Island. There we are, Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde, taking us down through the 20s into the teens, still going down to 11. OK, 11. Let's turn to your third and final answer, kidnapped. Still with Robert Louis Stevenson. Let's see how many of our 100 people said kidnapped for 1,250 quid. Is it pointless? Again, it's right. We pass Treasure Island. Down we go with kidnapped, still going down through the 20s, into the teens, still going down to 16. Oh, bad luck. <laughs> well... <laughs> It wasn't your dream category. I'm afraid none of our four really, really suited you. But listen, you came up with three correct answers. Not everyone can say that when, uh, <laughs> when, they're, when they're stumped. Um, I'm afraid you didn't manage to find the all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot. But you do get to take home a pointless trophy. So That's very, very well done for that. And you've been yeah. fantastic on your one and only show. <laughs> Uh, yeah, best of a bad bunch there, and uh, you made a, made a good fist of it. Well played. Um, I'll take you through the pointless answers in the different categories in case people at home have, uh, have got these. We'll start with Henry James, some of his biggest novels here, actually. Uh, the Ambassadors, The Bostonians, Washington Square was a pointless answer. What Maisie knew everything apart from the portrait of a lady, Daisy Miller, The Golden Bowl and The Wings of the Dove. Everything else was a pointless answer. Well done if you said another one. Anthony Trollope now. Can You Forgive Her was a pointless answer. He knew he was right. The Duke's Children, The Last Chronicle of Barset, uh, one of the Barchester Chronicles. The only ones that scored points for him were The Warden, Barchester Towers and The Way We Live Now. Everything else, pointless answer. And Stevenson, finally, you could have had Catriona, Prince Otto, The Master of Ballantrae, The Wrong Box. In fact, there were only three um, Stevenson novels that scored points at all and they were, they were the three we just had. So uh, there you go, everything else is a pointless answer. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and thanks, Ian and Pippa. I'm sorry you didn't win the jackpot today. That'll therefore roll over onto the next show when we will be playing for £2,250. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>